Topics covered in this video will cover basics of programming a route in the FMS, which will include discontinuities and takeoff performance in the newly updated Citation CJ4 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The first step in preparing the FMS is ensuring the active database is current. This one is, otherwise the text would be yellow. We also need to initialize the position. To do that, we can select set position to GNSS here, and that will clear the message and set the position of the FMS. Pressing this flight plan selection in the bottom right corner will conveniently take us to the flight plan page to enter this route, which is a nice shortcut, but also you can get to this page by pressing the flight plan button here. Start by entering the departure point, Teterboro. That gets put into the scratch pad and then placed under the origin by hitting the top left button known as L1. Next, we'll type in the destination, KMDW or Chicago Midway. That'll go into the scratch pad and then be placed on the top right under destination. And now 620 appears, showing the direct distance and nautical miles from Teterboro to Chicago Midway. We now need to tell the FMS how we're going to get to Chicago. We need to enter Newell Intersection in the two-way point here. You may have noticed that Rudy 6 departure was skipped. That's because that departure procedure cannot be added from this page. So after Newell is entered, we want to press the next button to go to the next page of the flight plan and enter the rest of the points. After Newell is a jet route, J60. That's going to be entered on the left column. Any Victor Airway, Jet Airway, those are always going to go in the left column. Intersections and VORs will always go in the column on the right. So what we did is entered Newell. We're going via J60 to TJB or Dryer VOR just outside Cleveland, Ohio. No additional en route waypoints need to be added, so the execute button can be pressed. Pressing Depart Arrive shows a list of available departure procedures. The Rudy 6 needs to be selected, there's no transition, and this departure only serves one runway, but runway 24 still needs to be selected. Once that's done, press Execute. Now to select the arrival, press the Depart Arrive page a second time and press Arrival. The Peng 3 needs to be selected and now the FMS just needs to know which transition are we going to fly with the Peng 3. That transition would be the bagel transition as seen up here on the route we filed. And once that's done, press Execute. The Legs button can now be selected to enable us to double check the route and also check for any discontinuities. A discontinuity is simply a break in the route structure where two waypoints would not normally be connected. And here's an example. Looking at the Rudy 6 departure after Rudy, the instructions are to fly a heading of 280. If the discontinuity were not in place, after Rudy, the airplane would fly to the next fix, which would be Newell Intersection, which would be incorrect. Anytime there's a heading or a course to be flown after a fix, that discontinuity would need to stay in place on a departure or arrival procedure. Here's an example of when a discontinuity would be deleted. The en route structure joins the arrival, but the point after dryer is bagel, which is separated in the current flight plan. Deleting the discontinuity by selecting bagel and placing it on the discontinuity will delete it and connect the route, sending the airplane direct to bagel after dryer. And here's that in action. Select bagel, it puts it in the scratch pad, put it on top of the discontinuity, Hit execute, we now have dryer, direct bagel. Continuing on with the waypoints of the arrival, the last fix in the FMS is Haley Intersection. Looking at the arrival, the last fix is not Haley Intersection, but it can be seen here. Just as transitions were selected on the arrival, another transition needs to be selected on the arrival in the form of a runway. Many arrivals are runway specific after a certain fix, just as the Peng 3 arrival is into Chicago Midway. Many times the landing runway won't be known until the aircraft is closer to the destination. But once the runway is known, it can be entered in the FMS and only then will the remaining fixes be displayed. Pressing Depart Arrive twice, we will be taken to the arrival page where we can select the approach to be used in this example, which is the ILS approach to runway 4 right. I went ahead and selected vectors which means we expect ATC to give headings to intercept the final approach course for ILS-4 right. Now the waypoints after Haley, which are Olsic, Tenley, and Cutler, have been added. A discontinuity was also brought up after Cutler. After Cutler, the course to be flown is 278 degrees. That course would be flown until ATC gives something different, so that discontinuity would need to stay in place. While flying en route, Let's pretend ATC gives us direct to a fix. There are two ways to go direct. One is press the direct key, select a fix, press execute. The second method is to select a fix. That places it in the scratch pad. Put it where you see the magenta and press execute. 
Newell will turn magenta and also Newell can be seen on the primary flight display over on the left. Those are the basics of programming a route into the FMS. To get the FMS completely ready for takeoff, the next and final thing we need to do is enter some performance information and calculate V-speeds. Luckily, that's a very easy task with this FMS. Here are the pieces of information from the ATIS broadcast that will be used in our calculations for this example. To get to the perf menu, press the perf key. On this page, press perf init, and then we're just gonna enter the information about the airplane right now. The first thing entered is going to be the weight. Passengers and cargo can be entered individually, or you can just put the total weight under cargo. It makes no difference. 40,000 feet will be our cruising altitude. It's gonna be flight level 400. You can simply type F as in Foxtrot and 400, and then place that under cruise altitude. Next, press the button beside takeoff to input weather information. The first piece of information we're gonna enter is the wind, 290 at three knots. The slant is required between the wind direction and wind speed. The temperature is plus eight. You can see how that's being entered, but if the temperature were negative eight, you would hit the minus sign down here and then eight, and then place that information on the outside air temperature field. The altimeter setting can be entered by using the barrow knob that will also change the display on the FMS, or it can be typed in manually. But if it's typed manually and entered, the altimeter setting will stay and no longer change when the barrel knob is adjusted. And you'll notice in the top left corner, RW or runway 24. When the departure was selected, we also selected a runway that was runway 24, and that's why runway 24 is in that space. Pressing the next key moves to page two of performance. Selections for engine anti-ice and flap settings for takeoff can be made. These selections will affect takeoff performance and the numbers do change when each selection is made. Pressing the send key will display the numbers on the primary flight display up here, and the numbers will also be placed on the airspeed tape, which allows the numbers to easily be read on the takeoff roll. While we're on the subject of takeoff numbers, here's another cool feature that's been added with this version of the working title CJ4. If the FMS screen has been moved away from the takeoff performance page, we can easily get that information back with the press of one button. Pressing MFD data will bring up the takeoff performance, on the co-pilot's MFD. But also pressing MFD data on the pilot side FMS will bring the information up on the pilot's MFD. Those are the steps needed to program the FMS in the Citation CJ4. Thanks for watching.